Praise the Lord. How many is glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I read in the Bible where he said, where two or three are gathered in my name, he said, I'm in the midst also. So me and Brother Jackie and Sister Nora, we came in Jesus' name. Hopefully everybody else has come in Jesus' name tonight. Amen. He's in the midst, right? Amen. Sister Bonnie, Sister Bo uh, Brother Michael, <laughs> Brother Gavin, uh, Brother Danny. Amen. We all come in Jesus' name. Jesus is here. Amen. He said, I'll be in the midst. So I, I'm, I'm ready to have church. Uh, amen. I'm excited. Amen. I'm excited today. Amen. And uh, me and Nora, we just went, rode down the road a little bit. I went and got me some uh, turnip seeds. Amen. It's time to plant them turnips. Oh, boy. Y'all seen Brother Michael out there yesterday. I couldn't get my video out, Brother Jackie. I got one of them workforce killers. And I told him, I said, now, I'm going to engage the blades. You get ready. <laughs> I did get rare enough with him. It took off. <laughs> but, uh, I told him, I said, now, I didn't have it, Governor, wide open. I didn't have the guy that when he fixed it, I didn't have him to fix it to where he'd run wide open because it had a, he took a flat to the field back to there. But we, we're glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Let's just stand and ask God to have his way tonight. Amen. We're glad to have Brother Jackie with us tonight. Preach for us. Amen. Oh, uh, we're looking forward to a good time in the Lord. Blessed Heavenly Father, Lord God, as we come to you once again. Lord, we just want to thank you, God, for being able to be back in your house. Lord God, to be able to give you praise and to be able to give you glory today, Lord. We thank you, God, that you give us traveling mercy today, that you kept your hand upon us and watched over us. And Lord, you watched over Brother Jackie and him as they came up here tonight, God. And Lord God, we just want to praise you and thank you for that, God. Oh, but most of all, God, we ask you to have your way in this service tonight. And not our will, but your will be done in this place, Lord. God, we pray, God, for those on live stream tonight that's watching, Lord. I pray, God, they get touched. I pray they get blessed. Lord, I pray, God, you give those that's, uh, Lord, that needs a desire to be in the house of the Lord. God, that they'll be in the house of the Lord. Uh, Heavenly Father, God, we just ask, God, you move upon the singing tonight. Uh, Lord, God, bless Sister Nora tonight. God, use her tonight. Uh, Heavenly Father, God, we ask it all. God, we ask, Lord, those that's sick. Uh, Lord, that's watching my live stream and can't get out in her bed passing, Lord. We pray, God, that you touch them tonight, God, as this is their service, Lord. I pray you reach down and move upon them, Lord. Touch their bodies, Lord. God, we ask right now, God, in your son's precious name. God, we give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Amen, sister Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Page one, victory in Jesus. I heard a note
still feel like traveling on the floor. Yes,
God. Amen. I like that song that says he didn't have to do it, but he did. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Uh, sometimes, Brother Jack, we go through some things, amen, and we wonder why. You know, the other night I come to church Sunday night, amen, my face was just was swollen all out. My eyes was all swollen was shut. My nose was all swollen. My lips was all out. And uh, I was going to let Brother Wayne just go ahead and preach Sunday night. And, but I was sitting there at the house after I come back from the doctor and uh, uh, was laying there and trying to rest a little bit. And I told Nora, I said, I'm going to church tonight. I said, you just stay home. I said, no, I'm going to church. And uh, while I was laying there, Brother Jackie, the Lord spoke to me. He said, as for me in my house, we're going to pray for the Lord. Yes, sir. Or we're going to serve the Lord. Yes, sir. And I laid there and heard it again. He said, as for me in my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And I said, okay, Lord. I said, what are you trying to say? He said it the third time. As for you and your house, you're going to serve the Lord. That's okay, Lord. And God gave me that message. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. And I was just going to get up and speak a little bit. And I was going to let Brother Wayne take over because my mouth was all fucked up, swelled up. And this over here was hurting so bad. The Lord just took over, Brother Jackie, and I preached, amen, and uh, my swelling started going down in my face, amen. I told him, I said, by the morning I get up, that swelling will be gone, God. amen. I got up, and all of this up in here was still kind of puffy, but all this down in here was done starting to go away, and I had just a little bit right in here swollen, and before the day was over, it was gone, wasn't it, Mama? Amen, but I still got this little bit right here in my nose right there. But, uh, you know, I, I could have stayed home Sunday night. I could have stayed home. It had been easy to stay home Sunday night. But that ain't what God wanted me to do. Amen. He wanted me to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. And, and, and in order for me to show a light, I got to be here. Amen. I, hate, I hated it because I had to miss Sunday morning. I hated it so bad. I told that doctor there to, at the pavilion, I said, now, I got to go to church. I said, uh, uh, you know, I got to be at church. She says, well, she said, you're going to lay here for 30 minutes or longer. Amen. If we give you that shot. And uh, I said, well, I thought, well, it, we'll get, we'll be able to get there in time. We'll be able to, you know, get done. I'll get out there and I'll be able to get there for preaching. Well, then 30 minutes went by. Brother Jackie and I got ready to get up to leave. Turned up, Nora had the live stream on. Brother Wayne then done had him up here playing the piano, getting ready to dismiss. And it really bothered me because I wanted to be at church. Amen. I don't like to miss. I want to be there. Amen. I want to be when God says be there. I want to be there. Because he let me know, as for you and your house, you're going to serve the Lord regardless. Amen. You're going to start serving me. Amen. And I, I, that's why I told the church. I said, you need to learn that you need to tell the devil, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. We came here tonight to serve the Lord. Amen. We came into his house tonight to give him praise and to give him glory tonight. Amen. I, I was hoping we'd have a bunch of people to come. Amen. Tonight. But, amen. They got other things they want to do, Brother Jackie, I guess. Amen. But, uh, I'll tell you what, uh, a lot of people says, well, it ain't all in numbers. No, it ain't. It ain't in numbers. But amen, sometimes it's good to have somebody here with you, amen, to help help and keep backing you up, amen. And I know Brother Jackie was probably looking forward to a house full tonight, amen. But I told him all nights went to the Smokies. They decided they wanted to go to the Smokies this week, amen. I know my daughter and them was going to go, but I didn't know the rest of them, amen, was. But that's all right. They needed a vacation, I guess. Amen, because I'm going to take one one day and I'll see what they say about it when I leave. <laughs> Not let them know when I go, amen, and see what they think, amen. Hallelujah. But we came here tonight to worship the Lord, amen. If you got a prayer request, turn your prayer request in tonight. Remember me and my family and my son were.
ones and awesome. also remember the, the unspoken request that the person that's in the hospital. Yes. Somebody else. Remember the church, the direction of the church that will always follow the leading of the Lord. Continue to remember uh, Brother Steve Kelman. I know he's probably still battling making um, chemo. And uh, I don't know that man personally, but that Alex Trebek, I think he's on uh, one of the game shows. But he he, he had a uh, Facebook thing on there asking for people to have good thoughts and prayers for him. He, uh, at one time, they had taken chemo, and they, he didn't have to take very much. But then it's like he had turned, took a turn for the worse, and he's going to have to take chemo again. And, you know, he might be rich and got all kind of money, but he's still got a soul. And one of these days, his soul's going to be weighed in the balance. You know, and I don't know his situation with the Lord, but I know he does believe in prayer because he got on there asking for it. So let's remember that man, too. Yes, amen. Somebody else. I've got a brother in law, Troy Coker, that really needs prayer. My sister, Jim, you know, they both need prayer. And also, uh, Trisha Matters there at church. She really needs prayer. Yes, amen. Somebody else. Also, remember Brother Larry Spaulding's son. Amen. I, I request prayer for him every night. Amen. Remember him, Brother Mike Strum's kids. Amen. If they get in church, get right with the Lord. Also, remember the. Uh, Wicks family, amen, they uh, just arrested two people or three people, amen, involved in that shooting. I know Sister Wendy's probably got some relief there, amen, to know that it, they found the ones that done it, amen. But uh, remember them, also remember the tent revival, amen, it's over at Scotsville, amen. I can't remember who's preaching, who's preaching tonight, I don't remember. Brother Kevin Hamilton tonight. Brother Kevin's preaching tonight, yes. Brother Randy Sloan's preaching tomorrow night. Yes, remember that, amen. Uh, also, remember those at the Smokies, amen. Remember uh, them that God will get them safe, travel mercies back home, amen. Keep their hands up on them, amen. Uh, Sister Hayden Kinslow will ask for prayer because she's gone, she's gone to New York. They left out at 2.30 this morning. And uh, really need to be praying, amen, because it's dangerous going out to these other states, amen, and Things that's really happened. They're just walking up, beating people half to death anymore, Brother Jackie. Amen. I, I've seen on there uh, people out in Texas out there, their little daughter, nine years old, was on uh, some, somehow, some brain, something, uh, done something to her brain, and she died. Amen. Oh, she got bit. I think she got bit. By something or something, it caused a brain infection in her brain and it killed her. She's nine years old and she died. So remember that family, amen, because they need our prayers. We got people on our live stream audience, amen, that needs our prayers. They've asked for prayers for their children, amen. We got this one lady, amen, that's out in Arizona, amen. She's got uh, some kids that needs prayer. And we. We've been praying for them. We put them in our prayer box. We've got another lady in South Carolina that's asked for us to pray for her five kids. Amen. And uh, we've got them in the prayer box. So remember them also tonight. Remember us. Amen. We need your prayers. Amen. Me and Nor, we really need your prayers. Amen. We, we, uh, we're we going to hang on. Morrison, darling. Amen. Yeah, remember Morrison, uh, Brother Morrison, Sister Darling tonight. Amen. Uh, Brother Morris is really going through some things right now. When the doctors told him the other day that his numbers was down, it really kind of kind of upset him a little bit and kind of threw him for a loop, amen. But I told him, don't worry about that. The doctor said he didn't have no cancer, so that's the best part, amen. The doctor said no cancer. There wasn't no sign of cancer. The numbers are up, amen, but there wasn't no sign, no sign of cancer, amen, so that's the best part, amen, so remember him, remember Sister Darlene, she's had the flu, uh, Sister Lori, amen's had the foot surgery, ankle replacement. ankle replacement, amen, a whole ankle replacement, so remember her, and uh, remember uh, Judy Page, amen, she needs prayers tonight, 
there's several out there that needs prayer. Remember Brother Danny Smalling? Amen. He needs our prayers. Oh, well, I hadn't heard how he's doing since he fell and broke his hip. How's he doing, Brother Jim? I didn't know he broke his hip. Well, Brother Roger uh, Brown told us the last time he was here preaching that he fell and broke his hip. And uh, that's what he said, so I don't, I'm going with that. So let's remember them. Uh, remember our president of the United States. Hey Amen. I've been watching the news and I've been listening to some things that's, that's going on and and they're going to try any way and anything they can do to try to stop him. Hey Amen. They're hollering today, hey amen, that there's things that they've heard him say on the telephone now that they've heard his conversation and all this. and It's just anything they can do that they're trying to draw straws and all it's doing is just hurting themselves. Hey amen. But we need to pray for our president. Amen. Pray for our vice president. They need our prayers. Amen. We need to pray for our landing country. But most of all, we need to pray for Israel. Amen. And pray for Jerusalem. The Bible tells us to pray for Jerusalem. Amen. So we need to pray for Jerusalem. And uh, also, I want to apologize. I'm not when I was preaching, I said that Joshua and Caleb held up Moses' hands, but it was Aaron and Ur that held up Moses' hands. So I will apologize for that because when you get in the anointing, you get preaching and everything, your things is going through your mind so fast. Amen. And I know what it was because we just listened to the song saying, but they, that's how the devil wants to try to try to throw something. But I, the Lord checked me on that when I got home. He said, no, it was Aaron and Herb that held up his hands. And I said, okay, thank you, Lord. I apologize. So I apologize. Amen. I, I'm man enough to stand up and say, hey, I made a mistake and I'm sorry. Amen. So remember that. Remember, remember all the churches around this community. Amen. Uh, remember Brother David McNeely. Amen. He's been real sick. Uh, he needs our prayers. Uh, who else, Brother Gabby? You got anything? Yeah, me. You? Yeah, you. Me. Uh, something that God works something out of the Word. Well, I can be off on the weekend, so I can make the church on Sundays and have a little more time with the kids on Saturdays. I get Tuesday and Wednesday off, but it's just, I don't really get a whole lot of time with kids other than the babies. I like to spend some time with my girls. Uh, but remember me, remember uh, Johnny and the girls. Uh, God's really been blessing us. Uh, and it's, uh, we, we've been getting a uh, whole lot closer to the Lord, or with the Lord. Uh, more prayer time, more reading time, more studying, <coughs> praying. Uh, Y'all just pray that uh, that no matter what, that God's will would be done, and that He would work it out the way He would want it to, and that he'll, His will would be done in and through everything. Amen. Remember, I, people I talked to at work about Jesus. Amen. Let's also remember Sharon and Edward tonight. Also, they need uh, they need our prayers. Amen. Uh, Derek and Kara and, and uh, uh, Daniel and Amy and uh, Pee Wee and Robin. Amen. Pee Wee's fixing to be a daddy. Amen. Uh, so they need our prayers and everything goes good. Amen. Also, let's 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 remember. Each other tonight, amen, as we pray. Amen. Remember Brother Jackie tonight, especially. Amen. It don't matter. He preached to just me and North. We was just here. I know he would. Amen. And uh, I told him, Brother Jackie, when we started, I said, if it's just me and North here, we're still going to have church. Amen. As long as Jesus is in the house, we're still going to have church. That's right. Amen. I came to praise the Lord tonight. Amen. So, remember, remember Kelly Blankenship. Yes. Amen. I, I just got a thing from... Uh, Blankenship. Also remember them, amen. Uh, we got some other ones on live stream, amen, that's been sending prayer requests to in. Amen. Want us to pray for them. So we need to uh, pray for our live stream audience. It's really going out, amen. We're getting anywhere from 30 to 40, Brother Jackie, a day want to be added to the church site. But I just don't add it to anybody. I go through them. And I make sure they're not listening or they're not 
dirty wounds on there. You know, you get some that women that show you a thing of Jesus, but when you go to their their web page, man, it's a different ball game. Amen. So I censor it. I, I check it before I add anybody. Amen. That's why I told the ones that does it. I said, you make sure before you add anybody, you find out. Amen. And I've got several from New York here lately has been asking to be added to the church site that goes to churches up there and big mega churches and stuff. Amen. They said they love to hear that preaching. They love that kind of preaching. Amen. And I wish people around here would love that kind of preaching, Brother Jackie. Amen. We'd have house full church. Amen. Right. But when you preach it hard, amen, sometimes you just you don't have a lot. Amen. I, I watched that TV program. Amen. I, that's what I was going to say. This TV program I watched. It's this little girl. She's three years old. Brother Jackie, she's done had eight surgeries. And they was taking her in today. I think it was today to have surgery again. Uh, and she's got cancer. Three years old. And her name is uh, Leanna. 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 Or something like that. Amen. And uh, three years old, Brother Jackie. And uh, she's done going through that many surgeries, amen, to try. They don't know what happened, how it even happened. But remember that little girl, remember her mom and dad, they need prayers, amen. They, uh, good godly people, amen. They, they, uh, and then there's a, another lady on there, uh, her uh, brother needs prayer. And then uh, there's this preacher on there that preaches, amen. His brother just had a heart surgery out in Arizona, amen. And, we need to pray for them. Amen. I listen to it about every night when it's on. I listen to it. Amen. And I I, I like it. And uh, But let's remember them. Amen. Remember Sister Margaret and Emma up there at the great uh, TV station. Amen. It's, it's, it's good. Amen. Unspoken quest by the raising of your hands. Buddy. Brother Wayne said pray for his dad. He fell a few days ago. Brother Wayne's dad fell. Mm -hmm. A few Amen. days ago. So let's remember him. Amen. That's what we quest. Pray at your seat or pray at the altar.
sometimes in your life you'll find yourself troubled. The battle's so hard, you just don't understand. You have no strength to fight, and it seems like it's over.
years and years and years ago and they said trailer. <laughs> and uh, but you know what? We they ain't gonna be no trailers in heaven. Amen. Amen. They ain't gonna be no cabins up there. They ain't gonna be no duplexes. Amen. They ain't gonna be no apartments. Amen. They ain't gonna be no run-down houses. Amen. Jesus said, I went away to prepare you a place. Amen. He said. In my Father's house are many mansions. Amen. He didn't say that he was going to prepare us a mansion. But he said in my Father's house are many mansions. Amen. He sees how poor that we go through life down here. Amen. He's not going to let us go through poor up there. Amen. He's going to bless us good. Amen. Even though we get the, hey, Golden Avenue. Amen. Just that one Golden Avenue. Amen. We're going to walk right down that Golden Street. That's a blessing. Amen. And I, I'm so thrilled. Amen.
it's available to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to God blessing and moving in a mighty way in this hour of service. Look in your Bibles, if you will, to the 12th chapter of the book of the Revelation. The Revelation that John had while he was on the Isle of Patmos. Praise God, the 12th chapter. We're going to be in, begin reading in the 7th verse there in the 12th chapter of the book of the Revelation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Folks, we've got to make it tonight. More than anything, we've got to make heaven our home. No place to turn back to, no place to slow down, no place to stop, no place to quit, no place to slack up in any way. But we've got to press on. So close. Hallelujah. I believe that the uh, trump of the Lord is going to sound. And just a little over a year ago, that while I was here in revival, that uh, I felt impressed of the Spirit that uh, the Holy Ghost that we are in the preparation stage. Amen. Just before the bridegroom coming. Something that's been on my heart quite a bit. I mentioned it last night at church. Uh, the Ten virgins. Said they were all virgins, but said Brother Gavin, five of them were wise and they had oil in their lamps. Uh -huh. Said five of them were foolish and they didn't have any oil for their lamps. Uh -huh. And said while the bridegroom tarried, that they slumbered and slept. Uh -huh. And said, Sister Nora, that the call went out and said that five of them that had the oil in their lamps. Their lamps were trimmed and burning. They were ready to go. And they went into the marriage supper. And those that didn't have the oil in their lamps were left behind. Right. It's going to be a sad day someday for all people that are playing games with God. Come on, and, uh, they're going to be Amen. slumbering and sleeping right. while, uh, while the bridegroom gives the call out. That's right. Praise the Lord. I love you tonight. I want to preach to you what we felt like that God spoke to us about for this hour of service. Revelation chapter number 12 beginning in verse number 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels and they prevailed not. Now folks we have victory over the enemy. Praise God when right. Satan was cast out of heaven. Lucifer was cast out of heaven and he drew a third part of the angels that went with him. Right. But that means that there's two thirds that are still left on our side. Right. For every demon that there is running around, there's two strong angels of God on our side. Right. Hallelujah. Said they prevailed not, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. The great dragon was cast out, an old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Look at what verse 11 says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Praise God. Father, Lord, we're so thankful, God, for the plan of salvation. We're thankful for the blood of Jesus that washes and makes us clean. God, we're thankful for sanctification and the a power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost, Father, the power that we have. When Jesus told his disciples to tarry in Jerusalem until they be endued with power from on high, Father. God, that's what the world needs tonight is the power of a risen Savior, the power and the fire of the Holy Ghost that gives us the energy and the strength. Father, the power to overcome all the powers of darkness. Father, you know better than we do how the powers of darkness are looming over our world tonight, God. But, Father, we understand tonight that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And we thank you, Father, for the victory that we have through your Son, Jesus Christ. God, I pray that you would anoint these lips of clay and take this body, mind, soul, and spirit. 
And use me, Father, under the unction of the Holy Ghost yes. to speak forth the word that you planted in our spirit, God. Yes. Father, may you receive all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Verse number 11, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their life unto the death. And the thought that I have on my heart and on my mind tonight is what is your testimony? I've said it a lot of times, Brother David, and maybe my church, I might get tired of hearing me say it. People probably get tired of hearing it a lot of times, but instead of having a testimony, Brother Kevin, a lot of people today, all they have is a money, Sister Nora. Right, people get up and they uh, say they're giving a testimony and all they're doing is they're saying, oh, the devil has been riding me all week. I'm, I'm down and I'm about out. Uh, some right. of them will even say, I'm down and I'm out. Yeah, but on. you know, a child of God, hallelujah, ought to stand up and ought to have a testimony of what God is doing for them, yeah. what God has done for them, uh, and what they're believing that God's going to do in the future. Hallelujah. Yeah. Too many times we're just dragging around. Uh, a testimony is something that tells. Uh, hallelujah, it's a retelling. It's telling people what God has done. But like I said, a lot of times all we've got is a money. There's been times in my life, uh, hallelujah, that my chin would be dragging the ground uh, and I'd be down in the mully grubs, but you know, I realize that I have the authority yes. over the enemy tonight. And I'm telling you the greatest uh, testimony that anybody can have uh, is that they know that they know that they know uh, that they're washed in the blood of the Lamb. Uh, hallelujah. Too many people today are just repeating a prayer. And I understand that sometimes that's what it takes. Uh, but what I'm saying is a lot of people are being misled today. Uh, that think all they have to do is recite a few words that somebody else have, has spoken and they think that they're going to go to heaven. A lot of people today think Brother David Miller, as long as they belong to a church, they're going to go to heaven. A lot of people today think as long as they pay their tithes that they're going to go to heaven. And all of these things are good. All of these things are necessary. But the testimony that everybody has to have to make it to heaven is that there's a time and a place. Listen, I can't tell you the exact day, but I can take you to the place at an altar of prayer at Dover Missionary Baptist Church in Scottsville or in Allen County, Kentucky, just a few miles outside of Scottsville. And I can put you probably within just a few inches of where I knelt at that altar that night and I cried out to the Lord Jesus Christ in my brokenness. And I'm telling you that when I got to the point that I realized that I couldn't help myself. I realized that everybody that was in that church as much as they were willing to do whatever it took, they would pray, they would testify, they would encourage, they would love, but there was nothing that they could do. That evangelist couldn't save me, that pastor couldn't save me, my mother couldn't save me, but Brother David Miller, the only thing, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, was the blood of Jesus Christ. And it takes a broken heart. It takes repentance before God. I don't just make up my mind. People don't just make up their mind that they want to go to heaven and everything's all right. There's not more than one way to make it to heaven. Jesus told Nicodemus, he said, you must be born again. Hallelujah. And he told his disciples, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. And he said, if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come again to receive them to myself that where I am, there you may be also. And I believe it was Thomas that said, Lord, we know not the way, and we know not where you go. And Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. He said in John 10, he said that he was the door to the sheepfold, and he said anybody that tries to come any other way is as a thief and a robber. Folks, it takes repentance tonight. It takes being washed in the blood of the Lamb. If you want to have victory tonight, if you want to be shouting on your way to heaven tonight, if you want to make heaven your home tonight, you're going to have to be washed in the precious blood of the Son of God. Hallelujah. And it's not once you get born again, it's not live any kind of life you want to. If it was that way, why would we have to be born again? If we could just go ahead and live the 
the old life, uh, but the Word of God says uh, that when we come to know Jesus Christ, uh, the old man is passed away, uh, and old things are passed away, uh, and behold, all things become new. Uh, if you say you got saved and you're still out drinking your beer, uh, you're still out shooting your drugs, uh, you're still out shacked up with somebody, uh, I doubt that you really got what you need. Uh, I know I'm nobody's judge, uh, but I'm I'm telling you that when Jesus comes into your heart and into your life, there's a change. And that's a testimony that the people need to have to tell the world today. Hallelujah. If the world looks at me, Brother Kevin, and I'm living just like the world, I don't have anything to offer them. But if I've got joy unspeakable and full of glory, if I've got a peace that passes all understanding, they can see that Jesus has done something. That's right. In my life. He said they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Listen, folks, the enemy, Satan, I don't want to lift him up tonight, but everybody ought to realize that he is our enemy. And he's going about seeking whom he may devour. He came to steal and to kill and to destroy. And all we have to do is look at what's going on in the world today. And we realize that he is running rampant. And I believe it's because of what it said there. In that last verse that I read, because he knoweth that he has but a short time. He doesn't know the day nor the hour, but he knows that his time is drawing near. He knows the Word of God better than I do. He knows the Word of God better than you do. Yeah. Hallelujah. Right. And he knows Man. as he looks around and sees the things that are going on. And I was thinking about it. I've talked about it, Brother David, so many times here lately about when Jesus said in the 24th chapter of Matthew, he said there would be pestilences. Uh, there would be earthquakes. There would be wars. There would be rumors of wars. Uh, and people say, oh, I've heard all these things. Uh, I've seen all these things. Uh, even maybe from the beginning of modern history, uh, we've seen all these things. Uh, but folks, have you ever noticed uh, that every little bit there's something new? Uh, have you ever looked around and seen how cancer uh, is just overwhelming this nation? Uh, have you ever looked and seen that every time uh, that people People think they've got to handle on something. Uh, there will something else come up. Uh, hallelujah. I've seen here lately on the news there's some kind of a disease. Uh, it has some kind of a uh, something to do with equine. It's passed by uh, mosquitoes biting people. Yeah. Uh, it's called triple E. Uh, and there's people that are being killed uh, that are dying because they're getting bit by a little mosquito. Uh, there's people that are getting Rocky Mountain, spot, Rocky Mountain spotted fever uh, and a lot of other things because they're getting bit by a little tick. Oh, let me tell you something, folks. They hear a few years ago AIDS was a great epidemic. Yeah. But you know, people didn't think much about it. And people just opened up and accepted the homosexual lifestyle and accepted anything and everything that comes down the road. Right. And before you know it, there was something else that came. And when they get a hold of one thing, there will be something else. Because, see, man will never get a leg up. Man will never get ahead of God, no matter how great man thinks he is, no matter how much research, no matter how much money is spent in the laboratories, they may think that they can clone people and create life, but only God himself can create life. It said that they overcame him, Brother Gavin, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and that they love not their life to the end. What kind of testimony do I have? What kind of testimony is my life to a lost and dying world? What kind of testimony do you have tonight? Do you have the testimony that you love the Lord more than you love anything else? Do you have the testimony that you know that there's a time and a place that you were born again, that you repented of your sins and was washed in the blood of the Lamb and became a child of God? Do you have the testimony that you've stepped out and you've gotten sanctified, baptized in the Holy Ghost? But see, the church world doesn't want to be sanctified. People still want to pack the world around in their pocket. People want to look like the world, act like the world, talk like the world. Listen.
listen, I'm not a clothesline preacher, but I'm telling you, it bothers me that years ago the hemline started coming up and the stop top started coming down. It bothers me that you can go out into the public today and you can see people that are wearing things that are less covering to their body than our grandparents wore. Hallelujah for underwear. Praise God, people would strip off and run the streets naked. All you have to do is go to the, some of the major stores and look and see how people uh, dress and how they act and what they do. And it's because people don't love the Lord enough to sanctify themselves. They don't have the testimony that they love the Lord more than they love the world. But folks, let me tell you something. This world doesn't hold anything good. Oh, you think you're having fun when you're out in the world, but you'll really stop and look. You think that drugs are good? I cannot for the life of me understand how anybody that claims to have good sense in their head can get hooked on drugs because all you have to do is look around you and see people that started out and they thought Sister Nora they'd just go to a party and they thought they'd smoke a little dope and that marijuana wasn't too bad for them and before you know it somebody else came along with something else and they said try this and before you know it they just couldn't exist until they got another high and the high that they got today wasn't as high as they got last week and the high they'll get tomorrow will never be anywhere near as a high that they got before but they're hooked and you look at people and you see how they get hooked on it and how their life goes quickly downhill and you can look at people that are on meth and you can see how they can be healthy somebody as big and brawny as I am and in just a few weeks their flesh is all gone they're just skin and bones their cheeks are caving in their teeth are falling out and they're just stumbling through the world in a day but yet people still claim to have good sense and they'll still run after the drugs. They'll still run after the alcohol. They'll still stand up and say, well, I may have been born a girl, but I've decided I want to be a boy. I may have been born a boy, but I want to be a girl. Folks, let me tell you something. It's real simple to figure out what you are. Just go look at yourself in a mirror without any clothes on. And you can tell whether you're a boy or whether you're a girl. Whether you're a man or whether you're a woman. It's an abomination in the eyes of God what's going on in the United States of America today. And people will get up and say, I'm a Christian. And they'll be a homosexual. Listen, if you're a homosexual and you're listening to this message, I love you, but I hate the sin of homosexuality because God did not create. All you have to do is go back to Genesis and you'll find that God reached down into the dust of the earth and he created Adam and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and he saw that it was not good that Adam was alone and it doesn't say that he created Steve or Johnny or Bill or Bob, but it said that he put, yeah. caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he reached into Adam and he took a rib out of Adam and he created Eve, he created a woman, a helpmate and it's God's plan and God's purpose I don't know why I'm here tonight but maybe somebody on the live streamer needs to hear this Oh, and he created man and woman, and he told them to go and replenish the earth. Man and man cannot have child. Woman and woman cannot have child. That tells you right there that it's unnatural for a man and a man or a woman and a woman to lay together. What kind of testimony do you have tonight? Do you have the testimony that you're going to stand for Jesus and let the world go by? Or do you have the testimony that you're just going to rock and roll with the world, whatever the world does? A lot of people are just like an old hound dog. They're anybody's old dog, they'll hunt with them. Whatever the crowd is doing, they'll fall right in with that crowd. Oh, but let me tell you something. When you really fall in love with Jesus, you won't want to run with the world's crowd. You'll find out that the the world has nothing to offer. Come on, brother Jack. That's right. Can I take you to Judges chapter 6? 
and tell you that there was a man named Gideon one day. Yeah. It said that he was his uh, father was Joash, uh, and they lived in the place called Ophrah. Not Oprah like Oprah Winfrey, but Oprah. And it was a town in Manassas, I believe it was. And it said that, Man that uh, Gideon was there and he was scared of the enemy. He was hiding from the enemy. And he was threshing out wheat by the wine press so that the Midianites wouldn't see him. Too many people are closet Christians today. Too many people, as long as they're in church, are a Christian. But when they get out on the job site, they they fit in with everybody else. But there was old Gideon, scared to death. Too many people are scared of the devil. Too many people say, I'm going to leave him alone so he'll leave me alone. Well, he's got you just where he wants you. Praise God, he's caused me enough trouble. I want to stomp on his ugly head. See, the Word of God tells me that I have power over him. The Word of God tells me that he may nip on my heels, but I can crush his head with my foot. Hallelujah, I want to put him down. Every time he comes by, I'm reminding me of my past, and he does that quite often. I remind him of his future, that he has a reservation in a place called hell. That wasn't prepared for mankind, but was prepared for the devil and his angels. But here was Gideon, and he was scared of the big bad wolf. There he was hiding from the Midianites, and he was threshing out his wheat. And it said that an angel came and sat down by an oak tree. Oh, too many people have sat down beside the oak tree and they've given up the battle. But this angel came and he sat down by the oak tree and he called out to Gideon and he said, Gideon, thou great man of valor. And Gideon said, who are you talking to? Well, surely you're not talking to me. No, he said, oh, he said, if, uh, if the Lord's on our side, how come we're going through everything that we're going through? Well, folks, sometimes we put ourselves in the place that we find ourselves. The Israelites would turn from God and they find themselves oppressed. The reason a lot of people are oppressed today is because they put themselves there. So I didn't do it. Somebody else did and do it, but you put yourself where you are, and I put myself where I am. I'll grant you there's times that we'll go through testing. There's times that we'll go through the fiery furnace to see what we're made of. But Gideon was like a lot of us. Lord, if, if you're really God, then how come you're not doing things? How come that you're, I feel so far away? God's not so far away. He's just a prayer away. But all we have to do is call out to him by faith. And he went on and he told Gideon that God was going to use him to deliver his people. And Gideon said, oh, but let me tell you. He said, our family is the poorest family in Manasseh. And he said, I'm the least of my family. But see, God uses those that are willing to step up. God uses those that don't walk around. There's too many preachers today that have got a sleep hairdo. They dress up. They've got rings on every finger. It wouldn't doubt me if they don't have bells on their toes. Hallelujah, little twinkle toes. And they're really liver. They wear silk panties. I believe a lot of them do. Because they're not willing to stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. They want to line their pockets. They want to have a great crowd. They want people bowing down and talking about brother so-and-so. But let me tell you something. God uses those that will present themselves humble before Him. Gideon said, our family is the poorest of Manasseh. And he said, I'm the least of my family. But God saw that he had a willing heart. Do you have the testimony that you have a willing heart? Yeah. And we move on over to the seventh chapter of Judges. And we see that Gideon, but in the sixth chapter, he tore down the, uh, the altars of Baal. Yes, and he did. began to step out. Yeah. And he saw that God was on his side. Yeah. And he was willing to rise up and do the work that God had for him to do. And he had 32,000. And God said, that's too many. Yeah. And 22,000 of them went home and he had 10,000 left. God said, that's still too many. And he got down to where those that got down. 
and lapped up the water with their hands and their toes. They were watching all around. They weren't just opening themselves up to the enemy, but they were on the battlefield. And he took those 300, and all he took, he didn't have cannons, he didn't have jet planes, he didn't have nuclear weapons, but all he had was the horns that they blew, the trumpets, and the, the, the lamps that they broke, and they called out the trumpet of the Lord and of Gideon. And all the army was dispersed and defeated yeah. without Gideon ever to go right into the fiercest of the battle. Do you have the testimony that you're willing to go on? If 22,000 quit, are you still going to go on? Oh. If another uh, 9,700 of them turn their backs and go on, uh, are you going to go the way they're going? Uh, if everybody else decides they're going to water down the gospel and accept anything and everything that Come comes on. along, uh, are you going to line up with them? Uh, or are you going to have the testimony that you stood for God uh, and that you and the minority uh, were able to do things that the world even uh, would just shake its head at? and couldn't believe what was going on. I'm telling you, in 2019, and we're soon to go into 2020, if the world stands and God tarries long enough, but I believe that the church needs to rise up like it's never risen up in modern history. Too long. We've hid beside the wine press. And we've threshed the wheat hiding from the enemy. And it's time that we realized who we were. It's time that we realized that when Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, and while he was in that tomb, he went into hell and he took the keys to death, hell, and the grave. He jerked every tooth out of the enemy's head and he marched him through the streets of glory and led him through the streets there in Jerusalem. And it said many of them that were in the graves and slept arose and came through the streets with him. The church is not... A social club. That's right. The church is not just a gathering place, right, right, but the church is a place to tell people about the love of Jesus. Yeah. The church is a place for people to come together and join our faith together yeah, right. and stand against the enemy. See broken bodies healed. See broken lives healed. See broken marriages put back together. See sick bodies healed. I'm telling you today that there's nothing that's too hard for God to do. And that's not my thought. That's not my idea, but the Word of God says that there's nothing impossible with God. Gideon had the testimony that he believed God. Gideon had the testimony that he was willing to serve God. Gideon had the great testimony that he tore down the altars of Baal and he took 300 and he defeated a great and mighty army. I'm telling you folks, we don't have to have the majority on our side. Me and God are a majority. You and God are a majority. As long as you're doing what God wants you to do, you cannot be defeated. Can I tell you tonight about a little shepherd boy, Jesse's youngest boy, yeah. and he was out there, he was a shepherd boy, yes, and he was faithful to what he was called to do. Right. Folks, too many people want to be the pastor. They're not willing to do what it takes right. to get the job done, but the body is made up of Come many on, members. Jackie. The pastor can't do it all. And I'll guarantee you that most people, if they were put in the place of the pastor, they'd say, woe is me. Yeah, it's right. not as glorious as I thought it was. Right, Those sleepless nights, where did they yeah. come from? Those heartaches, where did they yeah. come from? Oh, all that uh, thought in mind all the time about this one and that one. Yeah. The ones that are falling by the wayside. Yeah. The ones that are walking in defeat. And how you can encourage people and how you can help people. And how you can keep the anointing and the presence yeah. of the Holy Ghost in your life and in the midst of your people. That's right, amen. Yeah, amen. Little David was out there and he was content. Yes, he was. All of his brothers and even Jesse wanted one of the other brothers to be yeah. the king. But little David just stayed over there in the 
uh, on the back 40 keeping the sheep. Uh, everybody wants to be the chief, but nobody wants to be an Indian. Uh, right. Hallelujah. But they called him over there. Uh, he went down to the battle. Everybody knows the story. Uh, how that he went there and the Israelites were on one side. Uh, and the Philistines were on the other side. Uh, and one Philistine giant. Uh, isn't it amazing how one person... Uh, can challenge something and the court will side with them and the church will just roll over and play dead. Right, right. And then later on in life that person will realize how wrong they were. Oh, but David said, is there not a cause? He said, I'll go out and fight that giant. And there was King Saul. Man, he was far above all the other Israelite people. He wasn't as big as the life was, but he was head and shoulders, it said, above all the other people. And he was afraid to go out. Even though that he knew the power of God, he was like a lot of people. God may have done something yesterday, but I don't know whether he's going to do it today. God may have brought me over that river yesterday, but here I am at another river today, and I think I'm going to drown. Oh, I was sick yesterday, and God healed me. But today I've got a hangnail, and I believe it's going to just get me down. I've got to stay at home. I can't do anything because I've just got something that God has already healed you a long time ago. David said, while I was over there keeping my sheep, he said there was a lion and a bear came out. I thought a lot of times that it was a lion came out one time and a bear came out another. But when I was looking over it again today, it appears as if maybe, I don't know for sure, maybe it was different times. Maybe it was a month apart, a year apart. But if you'll read it and take it just as it says, it talks like the lion and the bear came out together. Now most people would run it after the lion showed up. Most people would run if the bear showed up. But if a lion and a bear both show up, hallelujah, everybody's going to run. And there's a preacher left by himself and a lot of times. We don't have enough backbone to even stand ourselves. But he said a lion and a bear came out. And he said they were going to steal one of my sheep. And he said not on my watch you're not going to. And he said God delivered that lion and that bear into my hand. I grabbed him by the beard and I smote him by the hand of God. Folks, when the enemy comes a huffing and a puffing and tells you that you're going to die, that means you're going to live because the devil's a liar. When the devil comes and tells you he's going to crumble you down, tear you down, destroy everything you've got, you just laugh in his face and tell him he has no power around you because you're covered by the blood of the Lamb. David said if he slew that lion and that bear, he'll slay this Philistine giant. Yeah. And everybody knows how that God delivered with just a sling and a stone. He delivered that uh, a giant and Goliath into the hand of David. David put that stone in that sling. He wound her up and he let her go and that stone hit that giant right in the forehead knocked him over. And David went and took, oh listen to this now, he took Goliath's sword and cut his head off. It's time we took the sword of the enemy and cut his head off with his own sword. Well, I think you're a lot longer than I need to. Let's move on up to the ninth chapter of the book of Acts. And can I tell you, there was a man by the name, Brother Kevin, his name was Saul. And he said that he had letters from the high priest and from the governors. And he was going about arresting Christians, throwing them in jail. He was a religious man. He was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. Man, he made sure every I was dotted, every T was crossed. There's a lot of people that all they know is religion. All they know is to follow their denomination. Oh, but listen, folks. Denomination will bind you. Denomination won't help you one bit. But denomination will bind you down and drag you down to where you don't want to be. And that's where Saul was. He was a religious man. Brother Gavin, there's a lot of religious people in the world today. 
Hallelujah. But they're just as lost as last year's Easter eggs. They have no joy of the Lord. They have no power over the enemy. They're just going through the motions. They may be in church every time the doors are open. Hallelujah. But they don't live right. They don't live for the Lord. And they have no joy. They have no peace. You know why the suicide rate is up so high today? You know why so many people are on drugs today? You know why so many people are on alcohol today? You know why so many people are running from a one uh, st one affair to another affair? One uh, uh, man to another man, uh, one woman to another woman. Uh, you know why they're doing that? Because they're looking for something that will satisfy their soul. And I'll tell you, whatever, you, whatever denominational flag... I don't want to call them out because I don't want people to say I'm picking on them. But there's people that will say that they're so glad to be a such and such a, a denomination. And they don't a bit no more know Jesus Christ than the man in the moon. They don't have any joy. They don't have any peace. Listen, I'm not saying that everybody that goes to a denominational church is bad, is wrong. But I'm saying so many people are so caught up in their denomination. Oh, let me just say this. Uh, slow down just a minute. I was talking to a man and a woman here a while back. And he was trying to tell me how they go to church and how faithful they are. All this stuff, how he loved the Lord. And I don't know, he may love the Lord. But I don't believe he goes to church very much because he's telling me about the church he goes to. And I said, well, who's the pastor down there? And Sister Nora, he stuttered and he stammered and he said, well, bro, bro, brother, bro, 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 brother, he turned to his wife and said, honey, what's the pastor's name? And she said, well, bro, bro, brother, bro, bro, brother, didn't know. Listen, if you go to church very much at all, you're going to know the pastor's name. But see, a lot of people like to say that they love the Lord, like to say they go to church, but you won't find them there very often. But I'm going to tell you people that love the Lord, when the church doors are open, I know there's times that people are sick, I know there's jobs, I know there's real excuses, real, not excuses, but there's real reasons that people miss church, I understand that, but you know what it is, is a lot of times we just make alibis, a lot of times we make excuses, a lot of times, well, I've got to work hard 10 weeks from now. So I'm going to rest up for the next nine weeks and six days. And I'm going to miss church for that one day that I've got to work hard ten weeks from now. I might have a headache two months from now. So I'm going to stay at home so I don't get the headache a day early. But let's get back to Saul. Saul was a religious man. It's like a lot of people are religious to go to church, but they never, never really develop a good relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And here was Saul on his road to Damascus one day. And he was breathing out threatenings and slaughters, arresting Christians, throwing them in prison, having their heads cut off. And all of a sudden, there was a great light from heaven. And a voice came down and he said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And Saul was blinded and fell to the ground. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, the one that thou persecutest. He said, It's hard to kick against the pricks. And from that day forward, the apostle Paul was no longer Saul, the religious persecutor, but he had met the Lord Jesus Christ. He had a testimony, and he wasn't afraid to stand before the governors, before the high priest, before the kings, before the rulers, and tell them that the Jesus that they crucified was the Jesus that called out to him and changed him on the road to Damascus. He said five times he was beaten with 39 stripes. Three times he was beaten with rods. One time he was stoned. Three times he was shipwrecked. He said in the deep of day and night. He said went on to tell about many perils. He said in many hardships and many sufferings he was in. But he had the testimony of what Jesus had done for him. And he has the testimony today of the church's foremost apostle. The one that wrote the biggest part of the New Testament. Testament, uh, the one that did more uh, to win people to Jesus yeah. uh, than just about anybody else. That's right. Come on. That's right. What kind of testimony do I have tonight? 
What kind of testimony do you have tonight? I read in your hearing tonight that he said that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony, and that we love not our lives to the end. Oh, how much do we really love the Lord? How much are we really willing to stand for him? Right. Are we really sold out for him like the Apostle Paul was? Or we like so many people? Like I said a while ago, just anybody's old dog, they don't hunt with them. Singers and music, come back. I'm done. What kind of testimony do we have tonight? What kind of testimony do I have when I walk out of these doors tonight and I go on about my daily life? Do people see me and do they see something different in me? Or am I one of them that they make fun of and say, well, if that's what being a preacher is, preachers aren't worth a nickel. You know, that's what the problem is today. The problem is not in the White House. The problem is not with those fruitcakes that are in Congress. But the problem is in the church world today. Because too many preachers are like those that I mentioned a while ago. They're lily-livered. They're sissies. They wear lace panties. And they're afraid to preach the Word of God. And that's why the church has gotten in the shape it's in. I'm going to quote this. I've used it many times. You've heard it many Many times, uh, but Second Chronicles seven fourteen uh, says, if the drug addict, if the streetwalker, no, that's not what it says. It says, if my people, which are called by my name, that's where the problem is. The problem is in those that claim to be Christians that are so out in the world that you can't tell them from a right sinner. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. That means there's people that have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, but they have wicked ways. Oh, I could preach another 30 minutes about those that claim to be a Christian, but they'll cut your nose off. They'll cut your throat. They'll kill you for a dollar bill. They'll run over you to try to get ahead of you. They'll do everything in the world. They're always wanting to fight, always wanting to fuss, always wanting to argue. Running around grumbling, griping, and complaining all the time. Nothing suits them. That's the number one sign of a backslider is when they're grumbling and complaining about everything that's going on around them. But he said, if my people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. He said, Then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. The problem is the church has tried to fit itself into the world. And it's let down on the holiness. It's let down on the righteousness. It's let down on the power of God. Like I said, people don't want to hear about sanctification. People don't want to hear about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They try to explain it away. They try to say that it died out when the apostles died out. No, 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 no. That's a big lie out of hell. And if you're preaching that, if you're teaching that, you're preaching and teaching a lie. Because the Word of God says when that which is perfect is come, and people say, well, Jesus has already come. But what it's saying there is when that that is complete is come, it's not completed. It won't be completed until he comes to this earth a second time. The next time he's coming, he'll step out on the cloud of glory. The next time the trump of God will sound, Jesus will step out on the cloud of glory. The same dead will rise up out of this ground. Those of us that are alive and remain will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. And after a thousand year millennial reign, get in the book, read the book. Some people say there is no such thing as a rapture. People that I used to go to church with, they used to preach the inerrant word of God. And they've got caught up in a new movement and they say there's no rapture. The word of God specifically tells that there's going to be a time when those that are in the graveyards are going to come up. And those of us that are alive and remain are going to be called yes, up right. to be with the Lord forevermore. Wherefore, encourage one another with these words. But people believe whatever somebody tells them. I'll try to sh uh, shut up after this. Oh, I started to stop and get him to explain it to me. And I thought, no, 
I'm just going to walk on. I was walking down the sidewalk at Cracker Barrel and Bowling Green today. And if I understood the story right, now listen, I respect our veterans, man. I admire them. I appreciate every one of them that has worn a soldier's uniform for this United States of America. And they were talking something about being a, a I understood about a veteran. And I heard this one tell this other one. They said, did you know you can legally go 10 miles an hour over the speed limit? And I thought, now where in the world did he get that? I was a state trooper for 27 years. And unless they've changed the law, I know they give you grace. I know that they won't write you maybe for going two or three miles or five or whatever over. But there's no law that says that anybody can go 10 miles an hour over the speed limit legally. And I thought, where do people come up with this stuff? But that's how people are in the church today. They'll hear somebody else misquote something, and they'll take it for the gospel truth. They'll never get in the Word of God and dig it out for themselves. But folks, I'm telling you, it's time that people got in the Word and see what the Word has to say. Not listen to some backslidden preacher. Not listen to some preacher that's in it just for an occupation. But get in the Word of God and make sure the preacher is preaching the word. What's your testimony tonight? What's my testimony tonight? It said they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of the testimony, and that they loved not their life to the end. How about it tonight? Hallelujah. We all make the testimony that we love the Lord, that we stepped out when everybody else uh, said no, it won't happen. When nobody else said God can't do it, God's not going to do it. He's not going to heal you. He can't heal you. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. Listen, doctors and hospitals and medicine, I, I praise God for them. But I'm telling you, there's a time when the doctor can't do it, the medicine can't do it, and the hospital can't do it. But I'm telling you, there's nothing according to the Word of God. The God is able to do exceeding abundantly above anything that we could ask Him to do and even think that He might do. Do we have the testimony tonight that we believe God? Do we have the testimony tonight that we're going to stand on the solid rock? Do we have the testimony tonight that we're going to rise up and fight the fight, run the race and finish a course and keep the faith? Praise the Lord.
Praise God. Brother Jackie preached good message tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Nobody else didn't get nothing out of it. I got it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It was good. Amen. I enjoyed it. Amen. I know people out there on live streamers enjoyed that message tonight. Amen. It's true. Amen. And if you just, if you listen to what he said, the messages are lining up, church. Preachers are preaching same messages but different ways. Amen. But they're all the same. They're lining up. Amen. They're lining up. Amen. People real don't realize, amen, how close the coming of the Lord is. Brother Jackie, the Bible said they'd be doing the same thing as they were doing. Amen. As they were doing in the days of Noah. Amen. They were drinking. Amen. They were giving in marriage. Amen. They were doing whatever they wanted to do. If they had ball games back in, they were doing their ball games. Amen. If they had their movie shows, they were doing their movies. Whatever it was, Brother Jack, they were doing the same thing as you see what's going on today. They think more of the worldly things than they do of the godly things. That's right. So Brother Jackie just preached the truth tonight. That's right. Amen. Sister Bonnie, he just laid it right out on the line. Yep. What's wrong with churches today? They don't preach on sanctification no more. That's right. Well, that's sanctification. We don't have to have that. Well, you got to you make heaven your home. Right. They skip that sanctification. Amen. They say, oh, we got that Holy Ghost. I'm like that brother Weaver down in Scott, brother Weaver down in uh, Mississippi the other night, other day, the last couple weekends ago. Amen. He said, it ain't the right Holy Ghost they got. Generic. He said, it ain't that real Holy Ghost. He goes, that real Holy Ghost will clean you up. It'll make you live right. It'll make you talk right. It'll make you act right. It'll make you go places you shouldn't, that you wouldn't used to even go. It'll make you go places that you used to not wouldn't go to. And it'll make you not go to the places that you used to go to. It'll turn you around either way, amen. Well, I didn't used to go to them Pentecostal churches and them shouting like that. Well, it's that TV program that I watch, WLC. WLJWJLC out of Babyville, Kentucky. Amen. They don't. There's all different kinds of denominations comes on there, brother Jack, Methodist, Baptist, whatever it comes on there. Pentecostal, Church of God, Assembly of God, uh, just different ones come on. And they don't argue with each other. They don't put each other down because they're. Like Brother Jackie said, religion ain't going to take you to heaven. It's how you walk with God. I hope I have a good testimony before the Lord. Amen. Like I said, I thank God for letting me be at church Sunday night. Amen. The devil, oh, I'm going to keep him home. He ain't going to know her. But guess what? I did. You know what he told me tonight? Brother Gavin. He said, why don't you just stay home? Call Brother Jackie time. Ain't going to need to come and ain't nobody there. See, he don't realize is God knows who needs to be here and who don't. That's right, amen. He knows who will take the word and who won't. Amen. It's true. Yep. Like Brother Jackie said, they'll get mad and they'll leave and they won't come back for a while, Brother Jackie. They'll get mad because you say something to them and all you're doing is trying to help them. I like what he said to me. He wants to try to be the pastor and step in her shoes for a while. Me and Brother Jackie would be glad that y'all step in and just see what you think. Sleepless nights, he hit that right to me. Man, I've been rolling and tossing and I've been tumbling. And I read the word, Brother Jackie, I listen to that TV program. And I think, Lord, God, what's wrong with people? What's wrong? You give them the word, you preach them with love, and you, you show them that you love them. I said, we got them. What's wrong? I worry. I worry that they're going to be found lost, Brother Jack. I'm afraid that they're like the, I just preached here a while back about the five wise and the five foolish. I'm worried that they're going to be like the five foolish and they're going to be out there no oil in their lamps when he comes. 
I, was, I told some of them I was worried they were going to be out worried about being out on the lake and being out on the golf course or being out on the uh, baseball field somewhere instead of being in the house of God. See, they used to, they wouldn't play football on Sunday. And then it failed. That was a no-no for them. Now it's an okay thing. You know, everybody wants to go and fill the stadium. And I thought, I told Nora the other day, I said, they said that they were drones that come over and bomb that oil and stuff over there. I said, how easy would it be for somebody to fly one of them over into one of them big stadiums where they're having a football game and just... Where would most of them be? Where would they spend eternity? See, the Bible said that fail not to assemble ourselves together, praying one for another. Amen. Did you pay close attention to what he said? If my people. You see, a lot of preachers says he said if the wicked don't turn from that, he ain't what he said. He said, if my people, which are called by my name would humble their selves and turn from their what? Their wicked ways. Well, I don't have no wicked ways. Well, it ain't what God said. But he said it plain and true. It's the word. He said if they turn from their wicked ways, and then he thought, Brother Jake, I tell you, 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 hit, you hit home tonight. You hit home. Amen. Just... You look around and you see things. Amen. I see things. I watch things. I'm a watcher. People, why you watch? I said, because I'm supposed to. God said to watch. Watch. He said also, he said, be harmless. Be as wise as a serpent and harmless. I watched the video. I watched that animal playing. I don't know if y'all ever watched, but I watched the animal playing. The other night they were fooling with a old snake. I'm talking one of them snakes that strike at you their whole body. Cobras. Cobras. They were fooling with that snake. That old cobra was wise for him. And he watched every way he would move and if they tried to get him in that bag they get his tail, get him head down in that bag, but guess what happened? That head, that head came up out of that bag. But when they started to take him out of the cage, Brother Jackie, he raised up and he looked around at him. And when you see that head starts to fly out, he's fixing to attack. Well, that old head, it flared out, and he struck. When he did, he hit that cup. It was sitting apparently in front of him. So we're going to have to do something different here. So they shut the door back on him. They had to get him out. They was putting him in a different area that they had made for it. But I watched that snake the other night, and I watched how it was doing. That snake was wise. That snake knew exactly what they was trying to do to him. Then they had these little doves. The little doves was just as innocent. And I got imagine about that dove that came down that day and said upon Jesus. Amen. So we need to watch church because we're supposed to tell people and warn people to turn from the wicked ways. See, I, I told somebody the other day that was asking me about that. I said, well, the Bible says that if you don't warn the righteous to turn from their wicked ways, then their blood's going to be required at your hand. But, but, but now wait, now the Bible said that the wicked, if you don't warn the wicked, I said, no, read down just below that one. I don't just stop at that one, go down to the next one. It said, if you don't warn the righteous to turn from their wicked ways, blood's going to be at your hands. Well, that's just people around your community, your church, uh huh. That's all the people that's supposed to be righteous. They're supposed to be holy. Amen. He said, you better warn them. Amen. That's why I, I, I watched this preacher last night. Preacher Brother Jack, and he's really young. Okay. I want to be like Brother Jack is preaching about. They may want to be one of those. 
down in it. Amen. Sometimes you, you can water down that message. And they're, they're, they're eating it up. But Brother Jackie didn't water it down tonight. Amen. Hey, I told you he'd preach anyway. I told him, I said, Brother Jackie will still preach. Amen. Us preachers, it don't bother us. Amen. I come out here sometimes by myself, Brother Jackie, and I preach. Amen. I get on the live stream, I'll preach the live stream. I don't know who's watching. But one day I was out here and the Lord spoke to me and told me to preach. I said, What well, made nobody here? He said, I said, Preach. And I began to preach. He said, My angels need to speak to be ministered to. Amen. I didn't see no angels. But they were here. Amen. So I just Praise the Lord. Sister Lisa Van Meter said, Praise the report. <laughs> Live streams. Said, the praise report. The lump was not cancer. No further testing. All test is clear. No cancer. Amen. Give God your hand. last night. They was three. They came to the Lord last night listening to that TV program. There's, they reach a lot of places. Virginia, uh, West Virginia, uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, Ohio, Tennessee, different places. It reaches all around the world. If you get on live stream, you'll pick it up on live stream. They go all over the place. And it sits up on a hill out there at Babyville, Kentucky. And uh, Brother Jackie, every time a soul gets saved, they'll put a cross up and say, one more soul. One more soul. Amen. Had a drug addict call in last night and, and uh, told him that uh, he was tired of being on drugs and he wanted to get start a new life. He wanted to change it. They, they can't tell what everybody says. They can just say certain things. He wanted to change his life. And he wanted to give his heart to Jesus. And he said he was in other words, he was at his last ends. He was ready just to. And they talked to him. Those preachers talked to him. And those counselors and on the phone. And told him that there's a better life. That there is hope for him. And he can give his heart to the Lord. Amen. And when he gives your heart. When God takes and does that. Amen. You don't have to worry about drugs no more. They're gone. Amen. Appreciate the Lord. Now, anybody got a testimony tonight?
same program, you do the same thing over and over and over and over every time that you go to church. You've got to change things up. <clears throat> you know, churches have got to wear, uh, uh, you know, kind of a little different than that preacher. You know, so Jack preached last, uh, last year there in the you know, uh, about getting out of the mess. And, you know, people get in church, they go to church and they get to where they sleep.
Tell our live stream audience, amen, that we will be having the Dean family here October 4th at 7 o'clock. So on Friday night at 1499 Birchville Road at He's Alive Community Church, Full Gospel, Glasgow, Kentucky. Amen. We'd like for you to come and be with us. Amen. Tune us back in again Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Amen. Tune us back in. We're going to be having service. Amen. We don't know how it's going to go. God's the one that's in charge of it. We just go with the flow. Amen. Uh, we don't have programs here. We don't program it. We don't schedule it. Amen. We just let God do it. Amen. Uh, but we want you to tune us back in. Tell you that we love you. We appreciate you. If you got a prayer request that you want us to pray over. Amen. You want uh, us to put it in our prayer box. Just write us a comment, say, please pray for this one, pray for that one, amen, and, and we'll write it down and we'll put it in the prayer box, amen, and we'll pray over it. We'll tell you, we've got good news from the prayer box, amen, a lady that been, came here uh, a few Sundays ago, she wrote her kids' names down in, on a piece of paper and she put it in the prayer box, and last Sunday night, one of her sons got saved. Called her, said, Mama, we're going to church tonight. She said, I don't usually go to church on Sunday night. She said, But Mama, are you going to go to church tonight? I won't go, Mama, you're going to go. She said, She wouldn't have missed it for the world now, amen. If she had the king, guess where that son could have been? Amen. But he got saved, and she's got another one in there, amen. And we know he's going to come, amen. And uh, so. God's moving in our prayer box. We'll tell you that we appreciate you. We love you until Sunday. May God bless you as our prayer.